Democrats stole our all-star game to push their divisive political agenda. Politicians and corporations lie, while black communities got hurt the most, even though a majority of black voters support laws like voter ID. To Democrats, it's just a game, but we're the ones who got played. That is the latest ad by the RNC, which will start airing during the MLB All-Star Game. And joining me now to discuss, RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Ronna, good morning to you. Welcome back to the National Desk. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. A very effective ad you guys have running now. Tell me why it was important for the RNC to run this ad right now. Well, I think it's important that it's running actually during the All-Star Game so that viewers will see this ad and recognize that Atlanta was really hurt through a lot of lies from politicians and corporations who misled the American people about these laws. And when I say politicians, I mean Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams and Raphael Warnock. And the impact is that black businesses in Atlanta who would have had their bars full and parking lots full and so much happening in their city were lost that opportunity because of the divisive untruthful rhetoric by Democrat politicians in, in corporate America. You know, a number of states have uh, debated these voting bills, including Georgia. Uh, there was a poll that was conducted with 800 registered voters, 31% identified as uh, Democrats, 29% Republicans, and 36% the vast majority identified as independent. Tell me what these recent poll numbers revealed. That Americans agree with everything that was in the Georgia law. We didn't poll the Georgia law. But Americans agree with voter ID up to 80%, over 88%. They think we should have security on drop boxes. They think we should have a timely uh, timeline to get results. They don't think uh, activists should be going and collecting thousands of ballots and disrupting the chain of custody and turning them in. These are the types of measures that are in the Georgia law, which also expands voting hours, which also expands voting on Saturdays and Sundays. So there's so much dishonesty around these laws. And why are Democrats fighting so hard? Republicans are fighting to make it easier to vote but harder to cheat, which every American should want because we want uh, we want to make sure that our elections are safe and secure so that we can trust the results. I want to take a look very quickly at some of these numbers, too, because uh, you mentioned some of this already when you talked about the ballot harvesting. In fact, 87 percent of voters said they were against ballot harvesting. Seventy one percent believe ballots should not be accepted after Election Day. And 88 percent, one of the biggest numbers of all voters, say states should not mail ballots to people who are not registered to vote and not citizens. Uh, a very telling poll right there. Uh, Chairwoman McDaniel, you also recently wrote an op-ed accusing President Joe Biden of failing to keep America safe because of the threats to law enforcement. We saw so many violent incidents over the July 4th weekend all over the nation, but particularly we saw a lot in Chicago. What is the solution to ending this influx of violent crime, do you think? Well, Tim Scott, uh, the senator from South Carolina, had a great bill that he put forward to the Senate and it was shut down by Democrats. Really things that looked at common sense police reforms and things that we should do going forward. But Democrats not only are defunding the police, but they're demeaning and demoralizing them. So not only are police getting less funds, there are less people signing up to be police officers and there are more police officers quitting than ever, which is making our communities less safe. And you know the communities that are getting hurt the most? Minority communities. And nobody can say anything other than this is coming from Democrats. Democrat politicians, we saw Kamala Harris support LA defunding their police. We've seen this across the country. And this is not good for our country long term. And Tim Scott had a very good bill that could have had bipartisan support, but Democrats threw it away because they don't want to solve the problem. They want to continue down this path of defunding the police and dividing our country. I want to talk to you about schools very quickly because on Friday, the CDC urged schools to fully reopen in the fall, even if it cannot take all of the precautions needed to curb the virus. You know, you and I have spoken about this before in the past. You mentioned your children in Michigan were still being taught virtually. Uh, what's your reaction to these new guidelines? And do you think we're going to see any pushback uh, from the teachers unions about this? And, and what are the prospects of your schools reopening full time in the fall? So I've been told that my kids will go back to school five days a week in person next fall. So hallelujah. I think a lot of parents are cheering and I'm glad the CDC has said this. I mean, we all are in favor of our kids being in school full time in the classroom. Any parent who had a child who was virtual knows that 
they did not get the education they deserved, certainly not the education that our taxpayer dollars paid for. So I hope the unions will support this. And let's see, let's see if the unions have more control over the Democrats again than the parents or the students, because that's what we saw last year when Republican states had kids back in the classroom, but Democrat-led states uh, pandered to their biggest donor, the teachers' unions, and kept kids out of the classroom. All right, Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel, we appreciate you joining us this morning. I've run out of time, unfortunately, so hopefully we'll get to chat again uh, in the near future. Thanks for joining us here. Thanks for having me.